this is Dylan Reich, and welcome to a video tutorial on how to play my song, Mulberry Street. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you to everybody that has written to me and requested that I do this. Uh, thank you for listening, paying attention, and, and writing. Uh, this song is uh, in the key of F, F major, and the tuning is open F. So let me uh, talk you through that. Start. F, A, C, F, C, and F. F, A, C, F, C, F. F major. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to break down each of the main sections of this song, the intro, the verse, pre-chorus, and chorus. We'll go through one at a time. Uh, we'll play it at tempo, we'll slow it down and talk about it a little bit. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll be well on your way to uh, playing this tune. Uh, Alright, let's get started. So it starts out with a bass line. Uh, I think of this kind of like setting the scene for what's to come. And it, because the a lot of this song is built off of this bass line. So open F, open 6th string, C, 7th fret, 6th string, and B flat, which is the 5th fret of the 6th string. So F, like that. So this is outlining a uh, harmonic progression that is happens a lot throughout the song, which is that 1-5-4 progression. So do this three times. all in the 6th string, 2nd fret, 4th, 5th, 7th. There we go. And at this point in the song, we introduce our drummer to the proceedings here. Uh, really, I'm just, it's a very, very simple backbeat on 2 and 4, very common. I'm just hitting the 6th string uh, with my thumb and getting that snare-like sound. And then I just repeat what I just played, so it ends up being like this. The little tag on the end is identical to the first time we played it, except I'm mirroring everything I did on the 6th string on the 4th string. So it's essentially harmonizing it a 5th above. So here's the beginning, all together. There we go. Uh, what comes next is what I like to call uh, really the intro. Uh, I'll play it through one time and we'll talk about it. So here's, here's kind of what we're shooting for. Okay, so we're adding uh, the bass line we just talked about. And that harmonic progression still intact from the very beginning. We're adding some sort of percussive sounds and uh, some harmonics here. So, first of all, yeah, like I said, the bass line remains. The only difference is I kind of like to put in a little pickup note right before that C. I should mention uh, before we go on is this song is, is a shuffle so it's got that kind of triplet feel and so it's not uh, 
It's not really straight, it's more like... So it's got that a little bit of a swing. So... Okay, so... Intro. We have our open F. Next thing that comes in is some muted strings. So I play the third string with no pitch. So when I say muted string, I'm not talking about a pitch. I'm not talking about a harmonic. It's just a percussive sound. Muted third string and then muted first and second together. loop that a couple of times. Alright, uh, these muted strings you can really play anywhere. They do sound a little bit different, depending where you put them. My natural musical inclination is to sort of play them up here, 15th, 17th fret, but you can play them wherever is comfortable. That's where we are now. I've got my first finger on the fifth fret, and I'm aiming for this harmonic, my first finger, the seventh fret of the third string. So what I do is I kind of I'm sort of moving down in that direction, and along the way, I kind of play this fourth string. It's kind of a transitory. It's another muted sound, but it goes. And then I'm in this position, seventh position. It's harmonic on the third string, harmonic first string, twelfth fret, and harmonic seventh fret of the second string. So we have this. Go through that, play that once, and the second time we repeat it, but we add a little tag on the end, harmonics on the 12th fret of the first and second strings. Put it together, we have this. And then the third time, we do what we did the first time. So that's what we end up with. I'll play that a couple of times for you. Point, let's turn our attention back to our bass line and what I'm doing here is I'm trying to grow and develop this bass line a little bit as this intro progresses while still keeping the basic foundation intact. So the first time through we do exactly what we just did. Second time through I'm adding in the fifth string. This is F A C. So when you play these uh, top three strings, you get a major triad. So by adding the fifth string in, I'm adding the major third to these chords F C B flat. So we're kind of detailing the harmony a little bit clearer here. First time through, second time at the fifth string at the third. Third time. We're getting some uh, development there. Uh, I'll do that again. It's just the bass line. Third time. I like to slide up to that third one. 
fourth fret from the sixth fret. Put it together with uh, the other stuff we had, and it goes like this. Slower. strings on the fourth fret again open second and third strings open sixth follow that pattern again up to the fifth and then seventh and this time no open strings Top of the bridge somewhere every time I'm hitting that that low F. Kind of like that. That was a little overemphasized. Just adds a little more percussive element to what's going on. And once I'm there, to tapped harmonics, the twelfth fret. I leave these fingers here. Uh, when you're tapping these harmonics, you tap right directly on top of that 12th fret. I use my first finger, but you can, it doesn't matter. And you want to bounce right off it. You don't want to sort of hang around too long. You want to just touch it very lightly, spring right off. Here's what we got. identical as the first time. The ending is a little different. So, so open fourth, open sixth, and hammer them both on at the second fret. So it starts off kind of the same, then open third, open second, then slide from second to fourth fret on the sixth string, fourth fret, Fourth string, open third, open first. So we have fifth fret, sixth string, open fourth, hammer it on at the fifth, open third. three or four strings. Now, you know, music evolves over time, so if you have the transcription to this song, it might be a little different to what I'm describing, because uh, I tried to transcribe uh, the album version. But as I play it today, I kind of do that strum and then I do another lighter strum on the way up. Kind of like that. And then at 
this point we're doing a position change, so my first finger is hanging around here, it's going to come across up to the 6th fret, it's kind of like a passing note there, and then I'm in 7th position. Then open 3rd, open 4th, hammer the 4th string at the 7th, another open 3rd, and then another strum of those top three or four strings. And again, I like to echo it with that up stroke. Then, hammering on the ninth fret of the fourth string, and then to the tenth. Then, pull off the tenth, back to the ninth, and then tenth again, so the little melody you're shooting for is and there's another C there too. Ninth fret third string, open second. So the bass line during that section I just played is literally this. So it's three, these low C's, but what I want to do is the third one, I'm switching positions again, back to fifth position, and I'm using my third finger on that third C of that bass line. So we're going like this. That wasn't a very good example, I'll try again. So for here, I'm going to the C, open 4th, hammer on the 5th to the 7th of the 5th string, open 3rd, hammer on the 5th to the 7th of the 4th string, open 2nd. So it's a little pattern there. on the 7th fret, all the way from the 4th, 3rd, 2nd, 1st string. So it's... Nice. So there's the intro. Okay, we're into the verse. We're at, you know, almost halfway there. So uh, here's the verse. Uh, once again, I'll play it through and then we'll talk. So probably the first thing you're noticing is our bass line still going. You know, this is something like from a composition point of view, uh, when you're playing fingerstyle guitar, you're often playing music no one's ever heard before. So you don't have the benefits uh, of that, the same familiarity as if you're playing Hotel California or something. So this is a little trick in a way you know, that bass line is, is in the intro, it's in the very beginning, and it's in this verse. So by the time I even get to this melody, you know, the listener has already heard this. You know, probably 15 or 20 times. So you're sort of almost trying to, in real time, uh, instill some familiarity uh, to the, the listener. OK, 
Okay, so bass line's still there. And it's still doing our little sort of developing, growing of thirds and fifths. And you can also hear our same harmonic sequence going on. So really, the biggest thing we're adding here is the melody. So here it is. F, the second string, fifth fret. Seventh fret. Pull off back to the fifth. Then slide from the seventh to ninth, then seventh fret, first string. Slide from 7 to 9th, and back again, then 2Fs on the 2nd string, 5th fret, and pull off to open C. That's our melody. So you can tell this is a pretty pop kind of uh, arrangement, you know. So I was trying to go for a kind of melody you can imagine somebody whistling or singing you know it's not this is not meant to be uh, complicated you know uh, harmonically or melodically so we put it with our bass line a little, uh, what I would call them, like a ghost note there on the open third string. Really lightly. That's its placement. But I would play very soft. Harmonics on the uh, 12th fret, first and second strings together. However, I would say these harmonics are less like I'm playing now and more subdued, more like a Nice. Now the melody, 7th fret, 1st and 2nd strings. Sliding up to the 9th and back again. Now, I'm going for that full C major triad with the 5th and then B flat. But I like that melody to kind of overlap that chord change a little bit. So I'm, so I'm reaching over here with my second finger to get that C major and first finger to get the B flat. So it's... So it sounds like that. Seventh to ninth slide, back to seventh, fifth, second string this is, pull off to open. So all together so far. That wasn't very good, but you get the idea. The uh, Next part of the melody, I'm, I'm doing uh, octaves, 7th fret of B, 2nd and 4th strings, open 1st and 3rd, 7th fret again, slide up to the 9th, and then 5th fret of the 2nd, 4th, so. One of the great things about this tuning is because you've got two Fs, and two C's, so you can, you know, do... You can do some cool 
octave things. So, whereas the bass line there is. Some people aren't really into that, so you could you could play it like this. It's a little uh, less natural for me, but but if that's how you prefer it, then no problem. Okay, first so far. kind of a bass slide so it's kind of the sixth string it's, it's not really scientific I don't have a particular fret but I just take my first finger tap it on somewhere around 15th 17th fret and slide down to about the ninth or tenth fret if I had to guess now I'm ready to start the melody again and my fingers kind of look like this so my first finger shifts back to the uh, F here in the uh, second string I kind of mute as many strings as I can except for that second string and I kind of flick To, uh, to get the beginning of that melody, so... This is, uh, you know, just one of those cases of you do what you gotta do, you know, I need that note, there it is, my hands are here, how can I play it? Well, I've got this finger free, so let's just do that. And then I'm back, right? So, let's play the verse up to there. So, the second time through there I go straight to the version of the these chords with the fifth in them, you bypass the, the one with the third. Next, I have my uh, uh, third finger on the ninth fret, the sixth string. Open third, open fourth. Hammer on the fourth fret, the seventh, then ninth fret. Followed by open second string. the 7th fret of the 3rd string, then ninth fret of the 3rd string, then open 1st. Again. Open 4th string. Slide from the 7th to 9th of the 2nd string, 7th fret, 1st string, then slide back down from the 9th to the 7th on the 2nd string, then 5th, and pull off to open. Remember there's that back beat going that whole time too. B flat, fifth fret, sixth string, open first and second, then add in 
Okay, fifth fret of the third string, and then an open F, and that goes down to the fourth. So you've got that kind of resolution, that stepping down motion there. I play that last little section a little more staccato, which means detached. I like that. You can uh, mix and match as the mood strikes you. So that's that's our verse. Then the bass line goes. Second, open A on the fifth string. It's a little bass line leading up to what I call the pre chorus. There we go. There's the verse. All right, and we're and we've got a couple more sections to go. I should mention that between verse one and verse two, there's a little thing I call the interlude. And it goes like this, I'll play it. Verse 2. Uh, I'll play it slowly. So there's a little hammer on pull off there. And then I switch to my thumb, but that might not be comfortable for some people. that's repeated. And the bass line goes G, A, B flat, C. slides. One that goes up like that and then another one that comes down on the bass strings. And then melody for verse 2 starts. So all together. identical to verse 1. The only difference is right at that point instead of just going I add in the octave below on the fourth string. So it goes Okay. Next up, 
pre-chorus. Uh, I really love this part of the song. So uh, what we have, I think the best way to learn this and to think about it is to break the individual voices apart so you can hear each one. Uh, what I think of the top voice is kind of this open first string, second string, third string, open first again, hammer onto the second. And then another open third string. So without the third string, it's just kind of like this. But you get that third string, which once again may not be exactly how I played on the on the record, but uh, it's how I play it now anyway. Happening on those sort of off beats. a drone and because it happens on those offbeats kind of helps propel it along so I wouldn't really feature this too much I wouldn't you know I wouldn't make it like that it's more subdued again and it's kind of uh, I would put it lower in dynamics to, to the top two strings Somewhere around there. Okay, so so this little ostinato. Slide from the fourth to the fifth, back to the fourth. And second, hammer on to the fourth, pull off to the second, pull off to open. And add in that open uh, second string on those first three notes. So again. And that F we pull off to, which happens a little bit just before beat one, is kind of treated as an anticipation of the of the, the F that would would have been on beat one. So when we repeat, it goes like that. Just one more time, play it slower. Okay, so there's our top voice, a little ostinato going on. Uh, now, bass line. B flat, first fret, fifth string, third fret, fifth string, second fret, fourth string, open fifth. So we've got B flat, C, D, A. So harmonically speaking, this pre chorus is a four, five, six, three progression. And the bass line follows this pattern. Drummer is very 
unpredictable, kind of boring, but he's playing it, doing his job, right? So get this in your head. Then you add the ostinato on top. drummer actually does something else. Good for him. Just a little little fill leading into the chorus. And then I kind of hit the uh, BF there. Leading into B flat again. And that's where the chorus starts. So there you have it, that's the pre-chorus, and next up, chorus, so this is the last section, so uh, I'll kind of do it the same way that I just did the pre-chorus, because I think it, 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 I find that it helps when, when I'm teaching to break down uh, the individual voices so that you can hear and uh, what, what's going on, you know, in the music. Uh, chorus, so remember. pick up and then it starts on the B flat. So the top voice here is kind of doing this. I got my uh, pinky here on the seventh fret of the first string and I'm plucking top three strings twice. The first time is kind of plucked, second time is kind of strung down, down stroke. Then my pinky goes up to the ninth slides down, back to the seventh. Then, this chord shape, which probably look familiar, it's the classic D major shape, moved up a whole step, fourth, fifth, fourth, the top three strings, and we follow the same pattern, which is plucked, then strummed, then pinky comes up to the fifth, and then pulls off back to the fourth. Second finger, the second fret of the first string, and an open second string. And again, plucked, then strummed. Fourth fret of the first string, pull off to the second, pull off to open, then second, pull off. Second of the second string, pull off again, open second string, hammer on to the second fret, open first. So let me just go through that again.
there's our top voice. Now let's look at our bass line. Now, uh, we're starting here with this B flat, but um, I kind of, uh, I'll take you through the basic pattern, which is. Sixth string, open C, fourth string, and then D, second fret, fourth string. Occasionally, other times, I add the open C there, so instead of just going, the bass line might go. Pre-chorus. Now at the end of the pre-chorus we went like this. Up to this A, F, G, A. Here we're going to A flat. First fret of the uh, fifth string, the A flat there, the third fret, and here D flat, first fret of the second string, and it's open F, third string. So what we have is a B flat minor seven chord. Uh, so up till now, the entire song has been more or less completely diatonic which means, with the exception of a couple of little uh, passing notes and things, that everything has been has come straight out of F major. So I think that makes a nice contrast is when I play an A flat and a B flat minor seven uh, chord here. It really stands out having had the entire song be F major, you know, really major key sounding thing. So, here we go. So here we are. Second fret, first string, pull off to open. Third fret, second string, first, pull off to open again. fret, third string, first fret, second string, pull off to open again. So, so far. Another B flat at the bottom. Open fourth string, hammer on to D flat, first fret, D fourth string. Open third, 
first fret fourth string again, pull off to open. Hammer on third fret of the fifth string, pull off to the first, pull off to open. Sixth, so all together. Again, I got my thumb here on the fifth string, that's uncomfortable for a lot of people. Um, And then when I hit the, uh, the uh, F there, again, there's another, uh, whatever you want to call that, you know, percussive body hit. And this is the intro game. So the chorus, all together, is this. So uh, there you have it. That is more or less, you know, the rest of the song from here is kind of repeating the sections we've already covered. So I think you probably have enough ammunition to get you to the end of the song. The one thing I probably should mention is the very, very ending, which is a little different. goes like this, open fourth, open sixth, hammer on up the second, open third string, open second. Slide second fret to the fourth fret, fourth fret, fourth string, open third, open first. Sixth string, hammer on from the open to fifth on the fourth string, open third. Slide from there to the seventh fret, seventh fret, the fourth string, open third. And repeat. Thing I should mention there is that two and four, it's a bit too hard to do that uh, slap here. So what I'm doing is a kind of like a that same uh, percussive heel. So you sort of get a little bit of that attack. So you get a little bit of that snare sound, a little bit of this body.
7th fret here, slide all the way up to the 12th. Big down stroke. Down, down, up. Then down, up, stroke, really uh, accented the harmonics on the 5th fret of all the strings. And then finishes where it all began, the uh, open F 6th string, as well as So one last time I'll play the outro. Whole thing. There you have it. Mulberry Street. So yeah, hopefully uh, you got something out of this video and you learned something and you enjoyed watching it and it wasn't too boring. Um, if you did, let me know, leave a comment, shoot me an email. Uh, don't forget to check out my website, dylanrack.com, for um, blog posts, uh, downloads, um, Skype lessons, you know, all the regular stuff. Uh, check it out, and thank you for watching, and again, thank you to everybody that asked me to do this. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you want me to do another one, let me know that too. Okay, take care.